We begin tonight um, with a totally unexpected development inside Republican Party politics. As the Republicans' big economic talking point, what they want to run on in 2010, is destroyed by one of their own. Destroyed by a fellow nationally known Republican candidate. Here's the talking point in question. Let me just propose something that may seem crazy to you. You don't need to pay for tax cuts. They pay for themselves. You need policies like an extension and making permanent the 01, the 01 and 03 tax cuts. They will be paid for because they create economic growth. When President Bush imposed those tax cuts, they actually generated economic growth. They expand the economy. They expand tax but revenue. Behold the Republican economy talking point for this year. The Bush tax cuts for rich people have to be extended. And don't worry about offsetting those tax cuts. Don't worry about paying for them because they're free. They pay for themselves. They don't add to the deficit. They actually reduce the deficit. The shock political development tonight is the way that this philosophy, this talking point, is being debunked and dismantled, complete with a pithy, insulting phrase from within the Republican Party. A nationally known Republican sage, Republican Greybeard, is taking his fellow Republicans apart on this one. So what I'm saying is that, that it's, uh, it just isn't going to work. And it's very interesting that the man who invested this type of what I call a voodoo economic policy. Voodoo economics. The idea that massive tax cuts can actually reduce the deficit and help balance the budget. It's voodoo economics. Burn. That was, of course, George Herbert Walker Bush way back in the primary season before the 1980 election debunking fellow Republican Ronald Reagan's promise, his campaign promise, that he would balance the budget while also giving massive tax cuts. A big difference, for example, that the governor and I have regards this uh, tax cut. In my judgment, that economic program would exacerbate the deficit. It would result in less stimulation of the economy. Now, Poppy Bush, as you know, ultimately lost that Republican primary, but he did turn out to be right about Ronald Reagan and the whole idea of voodoo economics. When President Reagan entered office, the national debt was about $994 billion. When Ronald Reagan left office, the national debt had swelled to $2.8 trillion. Love Ronald Reagan or hate him, when Poppy Bush said that Reagan's economic policies would exacerbate the deficit, boy howdy, he wasn't kidding. And Reagan's supply side trickle down nonsense about how his tax cuts would pay for themselves. They wouldn't add to the deficit. That was, that was, well you say it Poppy Bush. What I call a voodoo economic policy. George Bush Sr. was right. It's voodoo economics. Tax cuts don't actually pay for themselves. If they aren't offset, they grow the deficit, just like spending does. And yet when George Bush Sr.'s son was president and was pushing through his own massive tax cuts, listen to the argument that he made. Tax relief not only has helped our economy, but has helped the federal budget. You cut taxes and the tax revenues increase. If that sounds too good to be true, that's because it is. That argument was debunked by his dad years before. It was debunked by the experience of the Reagan administration. It was debunked even at the time that George W. Bush was making that argument by his own economic advisors. A 2003 report to George W. Bush from his Council of Economic Advisors said, quote, although the economy grows in response to tax reductions, it is unlikely to grow so much that lost tax revenue is completely recovered. In other words, they're not paid for. In 2006, Bush's Treasury Secretary, Hank Paulson, said, quote, as a general rule, I don't believe that tax cuts pay for themselves. In 2007, Bush's former chief economist wrote to people still in the administration, quote, you are smart people. You know that the tax cuts have not fueled record revenues. Now, you may not care that tax cuts add to the deficit. You may think that the deficit doesn't matter. You may think that reducing tax rates on rich people is so important that the whole country should take on debt in order to pay for that. But the idea that tax cuts are going to magically not affect the deficit, the idea that, as Steve Bennett at the Washington Monthly said today, uh, the tax ferry is going to come in and make giant tax cuts not balloon the deficit, the argument that one way to cut the deficit is actually to cut taxes, it's nonsense. It's magic. It's 
Well. What I call a voodoo economic policy. Right. Thank you, sir. Today at the White House, no one said the word voodoo, but President Obama turned criticism of Republicans blocking unemployment benefits into an attack on the way Republicans do like to spend money. I have to say, after years of championing policies that turned a record surplus into a massive deficit, the same people who didn't have any problems sp spending hundreds of billions of dollars on tax breaks for the wealthiest Americans are now saying we shouldn't offer relief to middle class Americans. President Obama obviously wants unemployment benefits extended to help ease the pain on the millions of Americans who are out of work right now. But he is also making a larger argument about how Republicans govern, what Republican priorities are. Democrats obviously want this upcoming election to be as much as possible about Republicans. They want it to be about what's wrong with individual Republican candidates, what's being proposed in terms of individual Republican policies. Republicans, on the other hand, keep saying over and over again now that they really want this election to be about spending and the deficit. They say they want to run on their fiscal conservative credentials, which is a framing that Democrats should welcome. Here's how the national debt has increased under Republican and Democratic presidents. On the Republican side, excuse me, on the Democratic side, the debt went up 42 percent under Jimmy Carter and 36 percent under Bill Clinton. On the Republican side, it went up 189 percent under Ronald Reagan. It went up 55 percent under George Bush Sr. And it went up a whopping 89 percent under George Bush Jr. So that's the record of fiscal conservatism that Republicans want to run on, apparently. As both Bush presidents might say if they were awkwardly amalgamated into one Bush president. Read my lips. Bring them on. Joining us now is Democratic Senator Jeff Merkley of Oregon. Senator Merkley, thanks very much for your time tonight. Oh, it's great to be with you, Rachel. So, Senator, the, the new Democratic senator from West Virginia is expected to finally be sworn in tomorrow. Should we expect that that will mean the Senate will finally be able to extend unemployment benefits? Uh, you should be able to expect that, and, it, and it's, it's none too soon, because we're having a situation in states like mine, in Oregon, we have 40,000 people who have lost their unemployment benefits, and if you put that across the country, that's, that's 4 million people. Uh, so uh, we really have a contrast here with programs to help the wealthiest or programs to help working Americans bridge through this deep recession to a better time. Well, Republicans are arguing now that uh, the reason to help the wealthiest Americans is because doing so is free. Uh, extending the top tier of the Bush tax cuts for the wealthiest Americans, it just is something that wouldn't add to the deficit. What's your, what's your reaction to that? Well, my reaction, this is like a, a summer sequel of a horror film. Uh, we've been there. We have seen exactly what happened under the Bush administration. We saw the national debt double. We saw that none of these giveaways to the wealthiest produced income. And we saw that it worked in tandem with shipping jobs overseas. So if this is uh, the idea of a, a national Republican economic policy, well, let's have that debate. And we'll bring to bear the statistics on, on just how it worked out last time. In terms of specific policies to try to not only grow the economy, but to try to alleviate some of the pain that's being felt in, uh, in specific parts of the economy, I know that right now you're trying to push through a small business lending fund. Uh, Republicans, as I understand it, are currently blocking that. What's the source of their opposition? You know, this is really strange. This is a program to help out banks on Main, Main Street make loans to small businesses. We hear from small businesses in every single state that they are constrained by their access to credit. They need that credit to seize opportunities, to, to grow, to take us out of this recession, most importantly, to create jobs. So here we have a program that CBO has scored as making the Treasury a billion dollars over the next 10 years, and yet it could create credit equal to about $300 billion of credit to small businesses. But the Republicans are opposing it. And why is that? There's, there's no rational reason unless the goal is to drive the American economy into a double-dip recession. You feel like, honestly, that Republicans are opposing the policies they're opposing and promoting the policies they're promoting because they want a bad economic outcome? Well, you know, I, I didn't come to D.C. As, as cynical as I feel here a year and a half later as a, as a senator. What I have seen is everything politicized by the primary elections and the general election plan for this year. And it, it certainly appears that all sense has lost all sorts of partnership to make American economy work for working Americans is gone. So if a, if a program is going to restore credit to small businesses, then the Republican leadership is against it.